When I took it to the Lord in prayer for him, if it was his will to get this work published or not, that he would need to put somebody in my life who would be able to guide me into this process. Someone that I could just basically run into. Well, that very evening that I prayed, I prayed that morning on the way to work as I was driving. That very evening, my wife came home from work and she told me, I met this wonderful lady today at work, and her name is Millie McGee, and she wants to meet you because I told her about your work that very same day. So, it was just so awesome that that very moment that I had prayed, that day, that morning, Miss Millie walked in the post office and talked to my wife. That next morning, I got on the phone and called Miss Millie. And since then, God just put these things in motion. Just an incredible, incredible uh, thing that God, that God did. And, I, and I'm wondering if this community really knows uh, what Miss Millie is and, and what, how she's impacted people's lives. And if you don't know, you're going to assume very well know. Because Miss Millie is a very powerful woman. She's had five books published, and she'll soon have her sixth one published this year. You will also know about the new authors that she's brought up to you, because those authors, very soon, within a year, are going to have their books all over the internet. They're going to be at Barnes & Noble, they're going to be at, at, at Borders, they're going to be signing their books, just like I've had those experiences. They're wonderful experiences, and I know that they're going to do it because they're motivated. Not only that, but they got a catalyst behind them. They got somebody who, that if they slack off, is going to get good. <laughs> I know that because I got kicked a couple of times. <laughs> so, what does the title "Whosoever Finding Christ in the Book of Proverbs" mean? And that's what I titled this book, "Whosoever." Well, in the Bible, John three sixteen. The verse that I believe sums up the entire Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you take that verse and you remove the word whosoever and you put your name right there, then you will know that God did this specifically for you. You can, make, you can change it. You can really feel the scope and magnitude of His love. For God so loved the world that Davida believes in Him should have everlasting life. That Miss Millie believes in Him should have everlasting life. That Dr. Morris believes in Him should have everlasting life. So our names are whosoever. That's our name. We are the whosoever that Christ came down to die for. So that's why I named it whosoever. Because God's word is for whosoever picks it up. You just got to pick it up and read it. Right? And a lot of people believe that the gospel of Jesus can only be found in the New Testament. And, uh, but I learned that Jesus is in page 1 of Genesis. And he goes all the way through Revelation. The last page of Revelation. You will find Jesus in every single page. But I'll get, I'll get, to, a second, I'll get, to, I'll get to, a, to the reason why I send it on the book of Proverbs in just a second. <coughs> I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. And I grew up in the mean streets, in the ghetto neighborhoods, in between East Los Angeles and South Central. A lot of gangs and everything. I was able to, I, I witnessed all of that and had family members that actually were engaged in that kind of activity. I saw that all around me. I saw and experienced a lot growing up in the 60s and 70s. And also experiencing the Rodney King riots in the uh, early 90s. I grew up in a non-Christian home and lived a tumultuous lifestyle, drinking and doing drugs at a very young age. But God had a plan. And it wasn't until in my mid-twenties that I came to the conclusion that I needed Jesus to be the Lord of my life and my personal Savior. God then put into motion many things in my life, one of which was, of course, writing this book. I never set out to write a book. It just happened. The book of Proverbs contains in it godly wisdom that is applicable to every one of us in every part of our lives, whether it be physical, relational, Financial, political, but especially spiritual. There is so much wisdom in it that I felt very compelled to know that my own son should know this and not walk the path that I walked in my youth. So I set out to write to him my thoughts about these scriptures. And like I mentioned earlier, through a set of miraculous events, it is now out there and here for all, for all to read and to learn from. It's really incredible how God works. 
I would read a verse or verses, then God would bring to my remembrance a time or situation in my life where looking back, God was protecting me or giving me wisdom to avoid something that was going to be bad in my life. I never knew he was there, but looking back, I know he was. I've also taken some verses and written short commentaries on it as it applies to life for us in today's world. During my writing, I sometimes became so overwhelmed by God's love and greatness that poetry would just flow out from me based on the verses of Proverbs I happened to be on. So I would write, I would put that in writing. I'd actually like to share one with you right now, if I may. It's on page 319. So those of you who might have a book can look through it. I begin quoting Proverbs 30, verses 18 and 19, which says, There are three things which are too wonderful for me, four things which I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the sky, the way of a serpent on a rock, the way of a ship in the middle of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. When I read those verses, I felt very, very awestruck by God. So a poem came to me, and it's called, Your Ways Are Too Wonderful For Me. Please listen to me as I read. Lord, your ways are too wonderful for me. How does an eagle spread its wings to fly? How can a ship float on the sea? How do the clouds know their place in the sky? Your ways are too wonderful for me. The deserts and the jungles were all created by you, each one capable of telling your story. From the highest snow-covered mountain to the deepest ocean blue, all bow down and proclaim your glory. The Alpha and Omega, Lord, there is no one like you. Your voice thunders wondrously, doing things we cannot comprehend, like forgiving our sins unconditionally and loving us with a love that knows no end. So many things I cannot understand, like you being born in tatters, that in the day when before you I will stand, the questions that I have will no longer matter. How does an eagle spread its wings to fly? How can a ship float on the sea? How do the clouds know their place in the sky? Your ways are too wonderful for me. And that just flew out of me. It just, it, it, because I was just so overwhelmed. By